kids. Good to see you guys again. Hope you had a great week um, and that you stayed productive outside even though it was raining. I think most of the week it was raining. Um, hopefully we have some sunshine here soon and it gets warmer because it's almost summertime and we're stuck inside anyways. So it'd be nice if it was sunny weather then you guys could go outside, run around. I don't know what you guys do. Let me know what your favorite sport is. Whenever you send in the Bible quiz trivia, question answers there might be a comment section if there is put down what your favorite sport is that you like to play in there so i can see it uh or you can email it to me that works too i know um gloria sent me this email she actually has a caterpillar that's in a cage and it's inside of its cocoon now so it's in its chrysalis stage so i'm super excited gloria you're gonna have to show me if it turns into a butterfly soon, send me a picture of it so I can see and then maybe I can show it with the rest of the class too. Today we're going to have Emma come in. She's going to help us uh, lead some songs today. What's our first song we're going to sing? Our first song is Little by Little. Little by Little. How many of you guys know that song? Raise your hand. Do you know that song, Little by Little? Emma knows the song. That's good because she's helping with it. <laughs> Alright, so sing it out loud. I want to hear you from Coquitlam. Sing it out loud so your parents can hear you, so your neighbors can hear you, so your cat and your dog can hear you. We want to hear it too. All right, so let's start. Ready? When mountains tower rugged and high, rise to the challenge, look to the sky. Trust in the Lord and start out to climb. Reach for the goal one step at a time. Little by little, inch by inch, by the yard it's hard, by the inch, what a cinch, never stare up the stairs, just step up the steps. Little by little, inch by inch, growing in Christ takes work every day, reading your Bible, learning to pray, build godly habits, seek help divine. Great things are done one step at a time. Little by little, inch by inch, by the yard it's hard. By the inch, what a cinch, never stare up the stairs, just step up the steps. Little by little, inch by inch, little by little, inch by inch, it's a cinch. Alright, good job on that first song. Do you guys remember singing that song? Maybe at VBS, but it's been a while. Next week, I'm actually going to try and teach you guys a new song that I learned on my bus route when I was at college. So next week, make sure you tune in. We're going to try and learn a new song together, and we'll see how it works. But let's start and sing this one for our second song. What is this one? My Heart Was Dark With Sin. My Heart Was Dark With Sin, alright? I read this book. My heart was dark with sin until the Savior came in. His precious blood, I know, has washed me white as snow. And in God's word, I'm told, I'll walk the streets of gold. To grow in Christ each day, I read my Bible and pray. All right, great job saying today. Thank you, Emma, for helping me with that. We will see her back again next week, hopefully. We'll see how it goes. If she's feeling up for some songs, maybe we'll bring in another guest next week. We'll just see how it goes. Thank you guys for singing today, for giving it your all, and listen now to the lesson today that we're going to teach. Uh, we're going to talk about Moses and his leadership and some leaders, important leaders who are in our country right now. And I know you guys remember... The Bible verse from last week. I'm going to test to you. What was the Bible verse from last week? Do you guys remember? That's right. Leviticus 27 verse 30, which says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. That was the Bible verse from last week. This week's Bible verse, and just to let you guys know, now, I know Gloria actually has the Sunday School book at her house, but if you guys have it, that's great. You can follow along, but I think most of them are, are actually at the church. But this week is our last week using this book, so we're on Lesson 13. Can you believe it? It's already almost finished. Uh, this is our last one, and then next week I'll try and find something that we can start on. We'll start in a new series uh, and make it kind of exciting for you guys while we're 
still not being able to meet together. We'll still have something nice for you guys to listen to and learn from God's Word. But this week's Bible verse is Psalm 31, verse 3. What is it? Psalm 31, verse 3. That's right, I heard you guys. So it says, For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Isn't that a great verse, especially for right now? Let's, let's hear it again. It says, For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. And you know what that's saying? David David wrote all the Psalms and the Proverbs, and it says, you know, while we're, he's basically saying during difficult times, during the storms, during those things that happen in our lives, maybe that we weren't expecting. This is something we weren't expecting, right? We weren't expecting to, to have to meet, you know, over live stream, over video classes. We weren't expecting that. But David said here, it said, Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. So during when difficult times happen, we can pray that same prayer like David did. We can say, you know, God, I don't know what's going on right now, but for your will, please lead me and please guide me for what you want for my life. And that's what David was saying. So that's our Bible verse for this week. It's Psalm 31 verse 3. So make sure you guys remember that. Psalm 31 verse 3. And... Uh, we went through all of, you know, the Israelites wandering in the wilderness, going into the promised land, the, the bad choices that they made, the good choices that we that they made. We went through all of that. We went through, uh, what else did we talk about? Um, remember when they sent out the spies, right? They sent out to the spies to see if, if the promised land was able to be defeated or not. And they sent out, how many spies did they send out? Right, 12. 10 were bad and 2 were good, right? Ten were bad and two were good. And another thing we talked about recently was tithes and offerings, right? And how we should give 10% back to God of anything that we, we get from people, we get from maybe birthday gift or anything that's given to us. We always should be tithing. And we also talked about offerings and what, what those are and what the difference is between those two. So this week we are, we are kind of narrowing it down. And we, we've been talking about the Israelites this whole time. We've been talking about how they were, you know, going to the promised land, how they were wandering, but we haven't really talked about Moses too much, right? Moses, he was the, the main leader, right, of the Israelites. And God obviously led the children of Israel, right? God led them through everything, but he used Moses as the main leader to help them get through the wilderness, to help them get into the promised land. Moses was the main one who... You could say he was a servant of the Lord, right? Do you know somebody who's maybe a servant who not, you know, is like a maid to somebody and helps somebody out and gives them different things, kind of like a slave? No, a servant, somebody who always is willing to help, always is willing to do something maybe that nobody else wants to do. Well, that was what Moses did. He was a servant for the Lord. So he wanted to do whatever God asked of him, whatever God needed of him to do, and that was leading the Israelites, right? Moses was in charge of that. And God used Moses to bring the people, the children of Israel, out of slavery. So, you know, God was the main one to do that, right? But he worked through Moses, and Moses was the one who helped the children of Israel out of that slavery and bondage in Egypt after so long. It says here, after God defeated the Egyptians, right? God defeated the Egyptians so the Israelites could get free. Moses sang a song to the Lord in Exodus 15, and many years later, Moses sang another song to God. Moses was not the only one to sing a song like this to God. Many other faithful Christians sang songs just like Moses did. Although Moses told his people how much God loved them and to be careful not to follow other gods. So number one, at the beginning of the song, Moses showed the difference between our Lord, right, our God, and the false idols. The false idols, the false gods, all the all the people, all the things that people worship that weren't weren't the one true God. Moses wanted to tell them, you know, this is we only have one God. There's only one God, and He's in heaven. That's the only one we should we should be worshiping. So that was part of the song. And Deuteronomy 32, verse four to five, it said, this is part of Moses' song right here. And I'm not going to sing it for you because I don't know the tune. So just listen. Right? It says, He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are perverse and crooked generation. 
So Moses was, that was part of Moses' song. And the point he wanted to get across was that there's no other gods. There's no other false idols you should be worshiping. And all those things, they're, people are lying to you. If that's what you're believing, they're lying to you. And what he said was, in here it says, a God of truth and without iniquity. Can anyone tell me what the word iniquity means? I'm going to just, I'm not going to say what it means, but it says in here, God of truth and without iniquity. So God doesn't have iniquity. What is iniquity? That's going to be one of the questions that you're going to see on the Bible quiz trivia. And you're going to have to kind of do some research maybe, or maybe look online, ask your parents. Um, that will be kind of like a bonus question if you know what the word iniquity means. And Moses said, God is our rock. Now that's something we can trust in, right? A rock, like a big rock, a big boulder, it's not going to go anywhere, right? It's going to stand fast. If, if a storm comes, it's going to stand, kind of like a big oak tree. When maybe storms come or winds blow, that thing is firm in the ground. It's not going to go anywhere because it's, it's got its roots planted deep. And it's firm, it's solid, it's a strong tree. And that's what Moses was saying about God. He's powerful, he's perfect. Everything that he does is based on truth. He doesn't believe lies. God doesn't believe lies. God doesn't tell us lies. You know, he's, he's not going to do that because he's, he's perfect, he's holy. Even if we don't understand what's going on, we can still trust in God. You know, we might not really know this whole this whole virus thing that's going around. We might not know why is this happening? Why is why are people sick? Why can't I go anywhere? Why are the malls closed? Why is everything closed, shut down? We might not understand completely why, even though the doctors tell us different things, but still there's things that we might not understand. Well, God does. God understands and we can trust him because he knows what is best for us. And he loves us and he's going to he's going to keep his children safe and he's going to take care of them, which is our second part of the song. It says, Moses tells of God's love and his care for his children. It says, Deuteronomy 32, verse 8 to 9 says, When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he sent the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So just another part of the song there that tells us that God really does care for his people and he loves us and he wants what's best for us. Not only that, but he's also going to protect us if, if there's anything that's happening. He's going to protect us. He's going to provide for us if we have any kind of uh, financial needs or just spiritual needs or anything. God's going to take care of us and he knows exactly what we need. Even if we don't pray and ask, we should be praying and asking God. But even if we don't, God knows what we're thinking. God knows each little thing that maybe we're like, oh, you know, I kind of need some new, um, I need some new shoes. They're minor kind of, you know, getting messed up. God knows, God knows that. Even if you don't ask him to pray, even if you don't pray for it um, to God, he knows. He knows your little request that you ask. Maybe it's something small like, oh, help me to maybe... Um, obey my parents more. I need help listening to them more and just just doing what they say the first time I'm told. Well, God knows that. God will, God will answer your prayer because he knows exactly what we need. Number three, Moses, part of, you know, Moses' leadership and part of the song, it says, Moses told the Israelites to always remember God's blessings, right? God did all those different things for them, um, getting them out of slavery, feeding them manna when they were hungry, manna and water when they were thirsty, leading them by that cloud by day, right, and the fire by night. God did that for them. And Moses wanted the Israelites to remember, you know, even in the bad times, you need to be praising God for what he's already done in your life. You know, you could say, oh, everything's terrible right now, and, you know, God's not taking care of us. No, that's not true. We have food. We have clothing. We have uh, a home in heaven when we die, that's something they get excited about. Even if there's bad all around us, we can we can praise God for the blessings that he's already done in our lives. And that's something important that we should always remember. Never to forget God's blessings. That's something we should never forget to do. Number four, Moses told the Israelites to think about the future. We should think about the future, not just things that are happening right now. We could just get stuck on the present and stuck on even the past and think, Oh, that happened two weeks ago. I cannot believe that happened. Or we could say, oh, this virus, this COVID-19, I cannot believe it's like this is what we're going through right now. No, we should be thinking about the future. When 
when God finally takes this virus away and we're finally able to be together at church, that's going to be that's going to be amazing. That's going to be such, we're going to all be rejoicing. Well, right now, we should be praying about it. You, you need to be praying personally that God will open the church doors, that God will speak to um, the people in charge of those different decisions that are being made right now for our government, for the city of BC, for everywhere the promise is. We should be praying that God will let us be able to meet again. And we shouldn't just be thinking about the negative, the things that are bad that are happening right now. No, we should focus on what God has already done, what God continues to do, and what we know that God is going to do later in the future. Number five, Moses reminded the Israelites that people who turn from God will be punished. It says the Bible tells us that the people who reject God will slide into punishment in due time. Now, you might think, oh, I did, I stole, I stole those, that, you know, that food from that, that store. Nobody's going to find out about it. No, that's not true. God will, will judge in his time. It might not just be, it might not be in that very second that you do wrong, but it'll end up happening maybe a few weeks down the road, maybe a few years even later. God will, God will punish you for that sin. And that's what Moses wanted to remind the Israelites when they do bad. God will, God will punish them because he's a just God, but he's also very holy and very gracious to us. God is patient. He won't punish us right away, but he will deal with our sin because that's what we deserve. You know, bad things are going to happen, but like God will punish us when we do bad things, right? It's only natural. And then as we come to the end of Moses' life, he was 120 years old. Wow, can you imagine? Moses was... Moses lived to be 120 years old, and God took him to heaven. The Bible still tells us that he was a very strong man, and so he didn't, we don't believe he died of, like, physical wear down, because he was very strong. Moses was very strong, it says in the Bible, but it says the Lord took Moses high into a mountain and showed him the promised land. Remember, he wasn't allowed to go into the promised land, right, because of the sin, because of um, their disobedience, their unbelief to God. He wasn't able to enter the promised land. Well, here it says, when God brought him up into the, that, um, that mountain, high in the mountain, he was able to look across and see the promised land. Even though he wasn't allowed to enter, God was so kind and so gracious to Moses that he wanted, at least, he wanted Moses to at least be able to see it and look over the valley and see the, the grapevines, those clusters of grapes, remember, that, that they found from the Promised Land. He wanted them to see the whole of that, um, that land and see how good it was. Moses was that special to God that God buried him in a secret location. We don't even know where he was buried, but he was buried in a secret location that only God, God knew about. After Moses died, God, God wanted Joshua to be the new leader of Israel. So Joshua was going to be the new leader after Moses passed away. Moses had been such a great leader, right? He was a servant. He was such a good man, always following orders. He still obviously sinned. He made mistakes, but he was a good leader for the children of Israel. And he had prepared Joshua to take over Israel. And that comes to the end of our lesson. And Joshua, Joshua after Moses passed away, Joshua began the new leader of Israel. And he would lead them many years Many years later, he would lead them, and Moses is the one who we're mainly talking about today because of his, his, um, his, his servant, his servant's heart. Right? He was such a good servant. Always, always wanted to do what God wanted him to. Always was faithful to the Israelites. He wanted, he wanted to be a good leader. He wanted to be the best leader that he could be, and that's something that we could even um, put into our lives today. Right? We could say, "Oh, I want to be a servant. I want to do whatever people need me to do. I want to be able to do it." And that's something that we can take away from this lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson, um, this book in the wilderness. And it's actually, um, we only had a few weeks in here actually that we did. Most of it was done over the live stream. But I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.